it got rough. I was I was uh, stringing radio wire from my command position. I looked to my left and, bam! The lights went out. Uh, when I got hit, all I could feel I could still see a little bit. I could see it was filled with this blood. Run. I did like this, and blood ran down my side. They just recently called, started calling it a war because it was just just a, a police action at one time during our history. But man, a war is a war when men are being killed. You are about to embark upon the great crusade to meet this mounting aggression. And make no mistake about it, good will prevail. November 8th, 1948, I enlisted in the military. Uh, we were on a ship to uh, Fort Riley, Kansas, Camp Funston. Strange thing about that, Camp Funston was that's where my daddy did his bishop training at Camp Funston for Riley, Kansas during World War One. So we crossed the uh, uh, Pacific, going to, to Japan. Then uh, during during the, during during the, during the, the voyage there, uh, we crossed the international date line. And there was an initiation, and there was all the fun and games and stuff. What's the initiation? What did they make you do? They, oh, they made you drink a bunch of stuff. They made you herb. <laughs> they uh, tied ropes on you and threw out in the surf. And while the ship was going, drag it for a while then. And uh, they, they made you a whole bunch of, then you got a certificate. You have entered the domain of the golden dragon. You got a little, little, little certificate. And that was, it was a sort of fun thing to do. And we was trucked to a Camp Gifu in Naka, Japan. All black troops and uh, white officers, 1st Platoon Company D, uh, 21st Infantry Regiment, Regiment was a regimental combat team I was part of. But then I was still waiting for my orders for officer candidate school. So, I had no field training, so the uh, officer of the day told me to uh, work in a mess hall. We went on maneuvers on, Count, on, on Mount Fuji, and uh, that was hard. It was hard, hard. The monsoons came while we were on maneuvers, blew all the tents down and were wet and stuff. But then uh, came back down to, to the base, my orders came for Corsicana Candy School. I had to take another physical, passed all of that. And I was in the order to come back to uh, the United States in September of 1950 to enter uh, uh, Fort Benning Officer Candy School. The war started June 25th, 1950. I was still in Japan. We were on alert. And we slept with that at our side and, uh, to be able to move out at any notice, at a moment's notice. Man, times were hard then. Uh, you see old men who had been in World War II, they were telling us stories about their, 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 their term in war. My, my short hair stood up on my, on my head. and. Uh, it finally came. I noticed during that time, um, the Army, we had white officers and black troops. But when, the, when we got alert for the, the Korean War, the white troops disappeared and we had black troops. So being young and not so much savvy about what's going on in the world, I looked at it and I didn't think about it anymore. We, it, was, it was actually war, war started, we, we, we arrived there. And uh, I was assigned a radio operator. I knew nothing about a radio. It was a this SCR 300. And uh, so what happened, I got, a, I got a crash course on the field about the SCR 300. I was, I was riding in a, in a Jeep and uh, we had our first encounter and uh, we took off. We went the other way. We didn't go forward. And I told the officer, I said, man, how come we always running? We don't, we won't fight. 
and he put his finger in my face. He said, the American army never retreats. This is a strategic withdrawal. So we set up again. We, we, we hit in combat again. And so uh, uh, again, it got rough. I was, I was uh, stringing radio wire from our command position to our mortar position. In those days, didn't have the, the, the radio. They had, we had wire, we had a string. My friend named Magruder, he was stringing wire in front of me, and I was digging a trench with my foot and putting the putting wire down and putting dirt on it and stacking it down. And we were going up this hill, and uh, bombs start falling. And I took cover. Everybody, all of us took cover, because when I look back, the guys down below me, they were digging foxholes. And uh, I'm, we're going we're gonna get to get the wire do down quick. And so uh, I took cover. I stayed down. And uh, I thought it was long enough. I looked to my right. And I saw Magruder. I looked to my left and bam. The lights went out. Uh, I looked around and said, Magruder. He said, Yeah, Walt. I said, Man, I'm hit. When I got hit, all I could feel, I could still see a little bit. I could see it was filled with this blood. I did like this, and blood ran down my side. I didn't have time to think what I'm going to do because I was out of it. I was out of it. I don't know how I got uh, One mind tells me that the guys put me on, the medics put me on a Jeep. One mind tells me that the Jeep was, the, the shop was shot off the Jeep. I don't know. I, I can't say, I don't know. I was out of it. You know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I came to on an airplane going to Japan. I had got I had got uh, penicillin shots in both bu both boxes and both arms because I had had got I had got uh, an infection from all that, all this stuff, you know. That was July 26, 1950, and uh, I was throwing at one some of the first casualties. And uh, MacArthur came to the hospital and uh, shook, shook my hand. Yeah, good job, soldier. And his hand was soft as cotton. I remember that. I couldn't see because both eyes were bandaged up, were bandaged. Shrapnel had entered my left eye took my left eyelid out and went across my head, cut my olfactory nerves, it settled on my right eye, and cut the nerves in my right eye. They tell me they told me it was the, the uh, superior superior oblique and meter rectus, some kind of nerves in my eye. I didn't know anything about that. When when the shrapnel in, in my brain they wanted to take it out, but I would be paralyzed if they would go in my brain and take it, push the shrapnel out. Uh, so they decided not to do that. They said the shrapnel would grow, uh, would, would have a growth around it to protect itself, and uh, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have any headaches. They said, but if it move, then I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. And uh, so they, they left they, they left it there. I spent 11 months at Brooks Mental Hospital. This eye now, I can't go up or down. It doesn't move up or down. It moves laterally, but not vertically. And that's, 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 that's another, another, another thing I have, I have to live with. During, when I got out, out I, got, I went back to college. But during the college times, I either I sat 
right in the front, because I couldn't, I couldn't see to right in the front. Or if I sat in the back, I had to take one glass off and put another glass on to, to see. But I got through. I, uh, uh, I got through. And uh, it was God that got me through all that in the beginning, you know. Being a black soldier in, in the Army, it, 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 it was, I didn't realize what I was doing. I was, I was following orders. My daddy said, keep your eyes open, follow orders. That's what he told me. So I did. In 2008, I was living in Tennessee. The Buffalo Soldiers had a reunion in Tennessee, and um, uh, they met, we, we met. This is the first time I met, because I, I, I had been following Army Times to see the reunions of all the units. And, uh, it never, and I never saw the 24th. So then, when we met, I was, I was with a group, a group of men at the table. We were just talking, you know, men had in time. This general, General, General Greer, I was telling my story. General Greer told me, he said, Dougherty, didn't you know that in 1950, the government put a freeze on black officers? I said, what? He said, yeah, the freeze on black officers. They hit me so hard, man, I laughed and went in the bedroom and cried like a baby. I hate to say it, but I did. I'm, I'm well, well enough now. To, uh, I, I, went, I wanted to be an officer. I wanted to serve six years to be an officer, but I never got the opportunity. Uh, I, look, I, look back, I, I look back on all of this, and maybe it wasn't God's will for me to be an officer. I, I don't know, but I know I held that in with me a long time, I finally got the grace to get on my knees and say a prayer to God to forgive my government. Mm -hmm. I made I was I made Corporal laying in the bed in Japan. <laughs> That's how I get to be Corporal, wow. you know. So uh, that, 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 that's my story. I, I'm not bitter anymore. Uh, I'm thankful. Uh, with my disabilities, I raised, we raised a family, my wife and I, my, my bride of 70 years. Uh, we raised a family, five kids. Korea and war was not a forgotten war. In fact, they just recently called, started calling it a war because it was just, just a, a police action at one time during our history. But man, a war is a war when men are being killed. So I think it's, it's apropos. Uh, I'm proud that I served in the Korean War. I'm proud I served with all black outfit too. Not that I don't like uh, other people, no, but it just happened. We all, we all, they had all black troops together. I don't know. I'm trying to find out the history why. I know about the history of uh, the Ninth and Tenth Cavalry. I know about that. I know about the Civil War. I know about all that stuff. But why? I, I haven't got in my heart why somebody picked me up from my home in, in Chattanooga, took me to Knoxville, Tennessee, put me in a hotel, and uh, when we got the next day, when we got to get, 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 get to get to the airport, they took us to the airport, and people was out there, man, uh, saying thank you, waving flags, saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I said, and the band was playing. I said, what is all of this? We got on the plane, they flew us to uh, Washington, D.C., um, got off, they had guides to take us around these different places. They gave us lunch. We got back on the plane, coming back to, to, to uh, uh, Knoxville. They had roll call. Elementary school kids had wrote each of us letters of thank you. And you tell them, 
get the, oh man, all down the safety. Read those letters for those guys. They don't know, they, they don't, and it was to me, to my name. I, my name was on all those letters. Then we got off the plane in, 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 in Knoxville. And uh, again, people, we were flying saying, thank you, thank you, and the band playing. And you tell my old man crying, man. Oh man, guys! Oh, I'm I'm old, but these are old. They cry like man. I said, "What in the world is going on?" When we got two weeks after we got back home, we got an album of all the pictures and stuff they took. Ain't that neat? Very cool. Yeah. I said, "Man, that was a great. That's my story." But I I think the one thing about it though. Uh, being a veteran, being a guy who's been hurt in the military, the Army has been, the government, the Veterans Administration has been good to me.